Hey friend, welcome back to Rocky Mountain Homestead. My name is Angela, if you're new, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you five different ways of cooking potatoes. These are five recipes that we absolutely love and I feel are worthy enough to be on a Thanksgiving or Christmas table with dinner. So I'm gonna take you along and share with you just how easy these are to make up. Okay, for the first recipe, we are going to be doing a caramelized roasted potato dish that I actually like adding carrots into. Um, I always do a variety of potatoes. So over here I have two yams, two sweet potatoes, three red potatoes, and two yellow potatoes. I don't suggest using russets for this just because they're a little bit more starchy. And the texture, I think, just comes out better on these. You can leave the skins on or off. Those were actually just really dirty, so that's why I chose to peel those. And we're going to dice them up into about one and a half to two inch cubes. And and then I'm going to be cutting my carrots lengthwise. I have over here about two pounds of carrots. Okay, so what I have done is sprayed a foil rimmed baking sheet with, I just used whatever spray I have, like an avocado mix um, spray. Spray it with some cooking spray and then I'm gonna take you along and share the glaze ingredients that we are going to pour on top of these. Okay, to make this glaze, we are going to be adding in a quarter cup of olive oil or extra virgin olive oil. We're going to be adding in a quarter cup of maple syrup, two teaspoons of ground cumin, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, and a quarter to half a teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper. You can omit it if you don't like spice. We're going to get a whisk and whisk this together. And then I throw everything in my 13 quart mixing bowl. Sometimes when I'm filming, I don't think thoroughly on what I'm doing. It's a lot different than if I'm not filming, but you don't want to spread these out on a cookie tray because you want to toss them with this glaze. So it's much easier to just do it in a bowl. So I'm going to cover these with a the glaze. I'm going to just take some tongs or whatever you'd like to and mix them around thoroughly in the glaze. Okay, these are all glazed up and ready for the oven. These are going to go into a 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. You are checking for doneness and I'll bring you back then. All right, and after being in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes, these are done. I forgot, <laughs> and I forgot myself, so don't worry about it if you forget to. I got a little sidetracked, but um, toss them halfway through, but look, fork tender. I did not toss them halfway through. It just kind of evenly cuts them a little bit more with the glaze, but as you can see, they're beautiful. They smell so good. They are fork tender, and these are absolutely just delicious. Okay, everybody always asks for me to do a taste test, which I'm not huge on, but I already had a bite, and they're really good. Flavorful. Tender. They're good. Okay, next up we are going to be doing some candied sweet potatoes or yams. I actually have a lot of yams, so I'm doing six yams, but usually I would do six sweet potatoes either or. It's fine. Um, so six large sweet potatoes, and I have half a cup of butter. I have two cups of white granulated sugar. I have one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one nutmeg, and I have a tablespoon of vanilla. I have my yams here washed and peeled and what I'm going to do is cut them into chunks. You can do what you'd like to at this point. You can actually slice them into like quarter inch, half inch thick slices. I personally like chunks of these so I'm going to chunk it up real quick. Okay so over medium high heat we are going to heat up a pot. I'm actually going to be cooking mine in a Dutch oven. These will be cooked on the stove top. We are going to put our butter in here and get that melted. Once our butter is added and melted, we are going to add our sweet potatoes to the butter. We're going to stir these up and get these coated once again over medium high heat and just mix these up really well into our butter. And then I'm going to take the sugar, our nutmeg, and our cinnamon, and I am going to add them all together in a bowl real quick and give this a whisk, mix it together, and then we are going to pour this on top of our potatoes. I am also to this going to add a pinch or two of salt, just some regular table salt, and you can salt it to taste. 
and then we are going to mix this together. Make sure the sugar does not stick to the bottom and just mix this together until it's well combined. And after stirring for about two to three minutes, this is really starting to melt down the sugars and turning into a thick kind of coating. So that's exactly what we want. Nothing sticking to the bottom. It's just an absolutely beautiful caramel color. So I am lowering my heat to low completely. So this is on low heat and I am going to be putting a lid on the Dutch oven and I'm gonna set a timer for about an hour. This depends, I'm just gonna stress this, this depends on the thickness of the slices or if you've cubed it. It depends on how thick they are. If they're thin, you're gonna probably wanna start checking this at about 40 minutes. But mine are, mine are pretty thick, like I said. I like it a little bit more on the chunky side. So I know I'm probably gonna need an hour, but about 45 minutes in, I'll start checking it. You are going to also want to stir this occasionally. So look at that, if you can see it. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful coating. So I'm gonna get my lid. I'm gonna actually scrape the, ooh, scrape the, the plate and just break my lid. Scrape the rest of this off because you want every bit of this, why not? And uh, yeah, I'm going to set these aside, put my lid on once again on low, one hour, stirring occasionally, and I will see you back when these are done. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes, just wanted to kind of show you what these are looking like. It is all liquid now, the sugar, actually I have my earbud in, sorry, I'm probably shouting into the camera, let me pull it out. So it is all liquid now, and we are just, like I said, going to let this simmer on low. This has got about 46 minutes left. So 15 minutes in, this is what it's going to be looking like. And now I will bring you back when these are completely done. All right. So it has been an hour. Oh my goodness, that is hot. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I should... I'm choosing not to get my tripod right now because I am doing the other potato recipe over there, but this is done. And um, look at these, look how good this looks. This is going to thicken up. I'm actually, and these are soft. So as, as I said, I like to chunk it up because I feel like if you do slices, it's just, it kind of falls apart. And I don't know, I feel like your potatoes that way, but these are like so tender. I could take a wooden spoon and just break it in half. So um, yeah, I'm going to actually put this on low for about five minutes just with the lid off now just to um, kind of soak in some of those liquids and then I'll kill the heat, but that is what they look like. Okay, I am also going to add our tablespoon of vanilla extract at this time and we are just going to give this a good stir. So my daughter just taste tested these two. Faith, what are your thoughts? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. In fact, this is, I usually do a sweet potato casserole for Thanksgiving, but um, this definitely has won us over. So I think this is going to be on our Thanksgiving table in a few days, but this is delicious. This would be amazing with some like toasted pecans or nuts on top, sprinkled on top. Graceland, do you want to try some? Will you do a taste test for the camera? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, she didn't want to be on camera, but what did you say? It was amazing. <laughs> she wants more. So yes. I try to respect my kids when they don't want to be on camera. You're so cute, though. I want to make what a lot of people call potato roses because they kind of do end up looking like roses. But I'm actually only going to make a regular amount right now because we're going to have a lot of potatoes in this house after this video, and I still want potatoes for Thanksgiving. So I'm just going to do what would serve 12 people for this. And I have three pounds of yellow potatoes here. You can use Yukon Gold potatoes, preferably bigger because we're going to be using a mandolin slicer for these. But this is from Azure, so I didn't order mine in person. So anyway, three pounds of gold potatoes. Over here, I have one tablespoon of fresh minced thyme. I love thyme, but you can also use rosemary for these as well. I have about two teaspoons of kosher salt. I have just the tiny pinch of cayenne pepper. And then I have one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. I have close to a cup of Parmesan cheese that I just grated. And then I have one third cup of melted butter. Okay, like I said, these are going to make 12. Don't judge. <laughs> I have three girls that cook and bake. Uh, I mean, like 
on their own sometimes and they clearly use this last I'm gonna deal with the stains right now so it's clean what we're gonna do is take some of that melted butter and we are just going to grease I'm just using a pastry brush right here we're just going to grease where we're going to be placing our potatoes with some of that melted butter so like I said one third cup melted butter and the rest is going to be going on to our potatoes just brush um and i only have obviously we're a family of 10 i only, I only have a 24 count muffin cupcake pan so i'm not using this half i'm using this half i then have i just washed this so that's why it's wet and we're just putting potatoes in it anyway so i am going to suggest doing these paper thin so you probably can't see it can you now let me move this big thing out so this is about maybe one sixteenth of an inch you want to do thin pieces so like i'd say between a sixteenth of an inch and an eighth of an inch max but that is how thin we want our potatoes sliced so I am going to actually first slice like the first two just because they're going to be all skin. And then I'm going to just slice these directly into the bowl. Once again, thin. If you don't have one of these, I'll link it down below. This is one of my favorite, one of my favorite kitchen tools, but um, they, they definitely come in handy. So and then I'm going to take out that extra piece. But anyway, that's what we want to do. So I'm going to get my three pounds of potatoes and get these sliced up. Okay, once we have these all sliced up, what we are going to do is we are going to add all our all our spices here to this. So I am going to take the black pepper and we're going to sprinkle that on top. We're going to take our kosher salt and sprinkle that on as well. If you decided to use some cayenne pepper, we're going, I'm sorry, it's loud. My kids are all playing. We're going to sprinkle in our cayenne pepper at this time. And then you're going to sprinkle in the herb of choice, whether it was rosemary, thyme, or whatever else you'd like. And then, okay, sorry about that. Anyway, once we have all that in, I washed my hands, took my ring off. We are going to blend this together with our hands. And I know it's probably like not. The, not something everybody is going to want to do, but it is much more thorough doing it this way because there's there's slices, they're thin slices and they're wet. So you, you have thin slices that are wet and you want to make sure this is all evenly distributed. So if you have a way that you think you can do it better, by all means do it, but this is how I do it. And I'm just going to blend these together, honestly, probably two to three minutes of doing this because you want to make sure you're getting in between all these slices, which is a lot. So once again, just taking your hands, clean hands, I shouldn't have to say that, but, um, and then just literally rubbing them all together, getting that seasoning blended between all these. And as soon as I feel these are good enough, I will bring you back for the next step. Okay, we have the seasoning blended on really well. I am now going to add the butter to this. And I am going to, well, the butter that was left from greasing the cupcake liners. And I am just going to now put the butter in. You can put the butter on before the seasoning or with the seasoning if you like. Me personally, I really want to get that seasoning blended. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, I really wanted to get that seasoning blended in there really, really well and make sure it was on the potatoes thoroughly. So that's why I'm doing this. Once again, if you can do it better, by all means do it. So once I have that butter kind of evenly coating all of these pieces. We are going to add to this our grated Parmesan cheese. And we are going to do the same thing. We are just going to get the cheese blended up with all these slices. Maybe some liquid on the bottom and that's because the salt's kind of extracting the moisture out of the potatoes. That's okay, you can drizzle it on after onto your potatoes once we get them in the muffin liner or you can just discard it. I honestly just discard it. Um, haven't cooked it with it on. So anyway, there we go. I'm going to uh, clean my hands up now. Okay, I tried to angle you as best as I can. Hopefully, hopefully y'all can see that. So what we're going to do is start placing uh, my big bowl of potatoes up here on the top of my breakfast bar. We're just going to start placing potatoes in. So they're potato roses because they kind of, they do look like roses when they're done cooking. Just gonna use two hands to kind of make this go faster. So we're just going to start by stacking them in the bottom, like just do a flat layer. 
and that is what I'm doing here. And then you can kind of, I actually, I might have more than 12 of these worth um, of potatoes. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, you're going to start with a layer on the bottom and then you can kind of um, shape these how you'd like to. You can really give it um, more of an effect if you want to start stacking them like this and kind of start, t you couldn't see, right? Okay. I'm, I actually have my camera upside down right now where I can't even see anything but the top of it. I'm kind of ducked down. So as you can see, I'm kind of like curling it up a little bit on the side. And that's why you also want these so thinly sliced. Um, not only so they're like more flexible, but also so they cook. Like you want these to cook because they are going to look done on the outside. These get out of the oven, but you definitely want them to be done on the inside. So we're also going to check for doneness and I'll show you when we get to that step and get these in the oven. My oven, by the way, is preheating to 400 degrees and that's all we're gonna do so you can totally stack these how you want them to look um, you can even just put them in flat and I'll do one flat just to show you what that ends up looking like but I'm kind of just tucking them in curling them out to the side a little bit more for that effect I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera and get the rest of these in the pan Okay, somehow, some way, I ended up with five extra of these, and I don't know how because I did measure it um, accurately. So we have five extra. Um, we're gonna have a lot of potatoes. The funny thing is, I weight lift now, and I am not supposed to eat potatoes. So <laughs> I hope my kids and my husband want a lot of potatoes tonight. Anyway, these look absolutely amazing. I'm about to pop these in a 400 degree oven, and these are going to be going in the oven for about 45 to 60 minutes. But as you can see, like they already look like roses. These are going to brown up and crisp up beautifully on the edges. I'm excited to show you guys. So I will bring you back as soon as these are done. Okay, so these are browned up a lot right now. I got about 19 minutes left on them because I have them kind of sticking up. So I'm going to cover them with some foil for the last 20 minutes. Okay, I was about five minutes too late pulling these out of the oven, but these smell absolutely delicious. I am going to let these set for a minute before I take them out but this is what they look like they're really pretty um for presentation obviously if you care about that kind of thing but most most importantly they are really well seasoned and they have a delicious flavor definitely cover with foil that last 20 minutes though so they don't crisp up too too much like i said if you just lay them flat they wouldn't um brown up as much but when they're sticking up like this and you're actually trying to make like the petal appearance they're going to crisp a lot quicker as you can tell so but they're still delicious they taste absolutely amazing and they smell so good so i'm gonna let these sit and then i will take these out the number one thing is just kind of getting them out to keep them together here. So what I'm going to do is just use this little spatula and have a plate off to my side. And look at that. Everything but like one piece stayed in the pot on the side. Mm, but it's delicious. And it's really pretty. I'll show you from a different angle. Also check for doneness. Mine was done after I had them in. I did have mine in for a full hour, but that is what they look like. They're really pretty. Like I said, you can kind of shape them however you'd like to, but it definitely has like the rose petal appearance. I'm going to go ahead and now pull out the rest of them and serve them up because it is now dinner time. That last one I actually pulled out, I think looks the best, but you guys get the point. These are just a really pretty flavorful presentation to add to your table any day of the week or especially the holidays. All right, next we're going to be making some cheesy au gratin potatoes. Do not get these mixed up with scalloped potatoes. Scalloped potatoes usually are not cut as thin and they usually don't include cheese unless it's like a more modern recipe. So these are about cut a quarter inch thick so I have nine russet potatoes, and I use the mandolin to cut them about a quarter inch in thickness. I also have a six hour. I have a quart of milk. I'm just using 2%. Doesn't matter which kind you use. I also have one teaspoon of salt. I have about a medium onion sliced into thin rings. I have six tablespoons of salted butter, and then... I have, I, I should say, three cups of shredded um, cheddar cheese, but I actually probably have more like three and a half cups. I just used what was left of this. I'm using a raw sharp cheddar because I kind of like the taste to that. You can use what you'd like. And then a buttered two-quart dish. Okay, first thing we are going to do is over medium heat, we are going to add our butter and get that melted. 
once that is melted and bubbly, we are going to be adding in our flour as well as our salt. And we are just going to get this whisked together roughly for about a minute. You just want all that flour kind of incorporated into a smooth texture with your butter. So I will bring you back in one minute. And then after about a minute of stirring constantly, we are going to gradually add in our milk. You don't want to add it all in at once. And we're just going to add maybe, maybe about a quarter cup at a time and just whisk that in gradually. As you can see that thickening up, we're going to add in about another quarter cup. Once again, this is still on medium to medium high heat. And you just want to get a nice, smooth, creamy mixture. We're going to add in a little bit more. And I'm going to continue adding in the rest gradually, and I will see you back once it's all added in. We now have all the milk added in. I'm going to set a timer for about four minutes, but between three to five minutes, you are going to want to stir this. Whisk this constantly over medium high heat until it has thickened up a little bit. So in about four minutes, I will bring you back. Okay, and it's been actually about five minutes. I ended up adding in another minute just to get this a little bit thicker. So I am going to grab the cheese and we are going to add all the cheese into this mix at once. And then I actually shut the heat off because I think this is going to be hot enough to melt and I'm just going to take the whisk and whisk all the cheese in. Oh yeah, it's melting. I actually could probably pull it off this burner. And uh, there we go. So our cheese sauce is done. Nice and thick and creamy. I'm actually going to take it off this burner and set it off to the side while we layer our dish with our potatoes because that is the next step. Okay, so my potatoes were starting to discolor a little bit, so I just soaked them in some cold water to get that color out. And what we are going to do now is we are going to layer and fill up about half of this dish with our potatoes and just kind of put them into a layer and I will bring you back as soon as I have that layer done. And then to this, we are going to want to take our thinly sliced onions. You can omit this part. It does add a lot more flavor to it, I found. But we're just going to layer our onions in the middle here. And cover up our potatoes. And to this, I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper. I don't have my freshly ground shakers. I actually have them in the other, in the dining room right now. So just gonna sprinkle on some regular ground salt and pepper. And then to that, we are going to finish topping it off with our other potatoes. All right, and it is time to get our cheese sauce. Um, you can add some additional salt and pepper I'm actually going to do that on this top layer and we are going to add our cheese sauce to the top of this. Okay, I actually maybe could have put this in a 13 by 9. I don't know, <laughs> but maybe it's my extra half cup of cheese. Just don't use an extra half cup of cheese. Anyway, so I am going to get this covered with some aluminum foil, put it on a baking tray and put this in a 400 degree oven for about an hour and a half. And before I do that, I am actually going to add to this just some chives that I have. I think that'll, that'll work good. So I am just sprinkling on some chopped chives that I have on hand. All right, these are done and out of the oven. Check for doneness and you can determine if you need to add a little bit more time. Of course, some of my sauce bubbled over on the side, but these are absolutely perfect and they came out just right. All right, you guys, the last recipe is going to be some creamy mashed potatoes. This is probably my favorite way out of the many ways I've made mashed potatoes for years. I think this has like the best flavor and it's super creamy and just good. So let's cut into it. We are going to use two and a half pounds of peeled and chunked up potatoes. I'm using the gold potatoes or yellow potatoes. I also, instead of putting them in water, have them in four cups of chicken broth you're going to save that too after you're done cooking them. That's six tablespoons of salted softened butter. As you can tell, it's very softened. My kitchen's pretty hot right now. And then I don't have half and half 
Um, this is actually two thirds, even though it's in a one cup. So I have one third of 2% milk and I have one third of heavy whipping cream in there. I'm going to bring this to a boil over medium high heat and then I will bring you back when this is at a boil. Okay, this is now starting to come to a boil. So what I'm going to do is get my lid I'm going to continue to boil this on high for 10, about 10 minutes or until these are tender. Once again, still on high heat. I will see you back in 10 minutes. Okay, and after boiling with the lid on for the 10 minutes on high heat, these are now for tender and ready to drain. And remember, we are reserving the broth in this. Okay, we are going to drop in the salted butter and you can use a potato masher. I'm actually going to be using a hand mixer just to make this go a little bit quicker and we're gonna get these blended together. To that, I am going to be adding in the cream. Okay, now that that's blended together, you are going to add in the chicken broth that we strained out gradually a little bit at a time until you get the desired consistency of your potatoes. All right, once you get the consistency that you want to, you are going to go ahead and add your salt and pepper however you like to taste. At this time, you can add in a little bit of butter on top or some chives if you'd like to, but this is it. They're absolutely delicious and creamy and really flavorful, especially with boiling them in the chicken broth. All right, you guys. Well, that was quite some time we spent in the kitchen the past couple hours. I actually, it is late. I've been editing what I filmed already at this point to try and get this up to you. One of my goals was to get these videos out to you guys before Thanksgiving. If not, they can at least be used for Christmas, but I've been editing that. So I'm going to do my outro right now so I can get this edited and uploaded. It is pretty late at night. It's like after 10 o'clock at night. I usually don't post late, but I do have a video I want to do tomorrow as well. And I want to get that up tomorrow. So instead of doing two videos in one day, I was like, maybe I just post, I don't know. It's late. I don't like posting late. I'll sort that out. But anyway, these are great recipes that are perfect for Thanksgiving or Christmas or really anytime. These are dishes that we do throughout the year with dinners as well. So these are just great all the time. But if you're looking to try something new, then definitely go ahead and check out that description box down below. And I will be sure to post the ingredients and the serving amounts there as well. My cat is saying, mom, can you hear it? I, I can't hear anything over my dehydrator. I actually have my dehydrator going my bell peppers because my freeze dryer broke. Um, yeah, that's, that happened. To, that actually happened yesterday. And I am so thankful for my Excalibur because the freeze dryer like just wasn't cooling. I don't even know. We had it not even a year. So, um, he's swapping it out at Shields tomorrow and they're just giving us a brand new unit because we shouldn't have had a problem anyway. All that aside, that's the noise. I forgot to shut it off to end this video, but Lots going on, busy day. I'm actually about to run to the station and work out real quick before midnight so I could try and get my workout in for today since I'm not going to be working out Wednesday and Thursday this week. But I hope this video is helpful. I hope you guys give these recipes a try and I will see you guys probably tomorrow with another video as well that I'd like to get out there before Thanksgiving. So I will see you guys on that video. Until then, take care and God bless.